This conference will now be recorded. Okay, go ahead. Okay, it's 6.11 p.m. on September 1st, 2022. This is Bill O'Brien, uh, 9th District Councilman and Chairman of the Parks and Rec Committee, calling the meeting to order. And we have a few minutes for J July 7th. Motion to approve the minutes from July 7th. Drew. I have a second. Prez seconded. I don't know if you could hear him, Bill. Just barely, yeah. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I guess uh, Chad is up next. Before Chad starts, we have the committee our, our condolences on passing your father and father for the problem. Can you hear him, Chad? Bill offered, before you start your report, he just offered on behalf of the Parks and Rec Committee, he offered the condolen our condolences on the loss of your father and father-in-law. Thank you. Appreciate that from everyone. Are you ready for your report, Chad? Um, I mean, since July, you know, August has been a, a good busy month, you know, with, uh, you know, the grass burning out and all that stuff, not getting any rain, didn't really slow us down with all the responsibility that we have. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about some projects that we've been working on for a long time that are coming towards their tail end of the stages that's good. So they're going to be starting to get done and they're all projected kind of to get done by the end of the year. Uh, but you know, only time and weather will be able to tell that, um, but at least that's what we're shooting for. Um, up at Franklin School, we've been working for a while with the Board of Education with CBDG money to put poor in place underneath the playground and replacing the swing sets there to a more modern swing set, more for kids than adults. It's a little bit lower crossbar and stuff like that, so the fall height it isn't as much. So working with Kevin Clem and Rich Ruggiero on this project, um, it's getting closer, you know, we're talking with game time. They're trying to schedule it. They're opening up the accounts. They're trying to get all of that stuff materials ordered. So they're hoping that if they move quick enough, it could be done before this October, before it gets too cold and they can't do the pour in place. So uh, more will come as, the, as that project comes out uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Lordship School and Worcester School, we are in, the, in uh, talking with Hinding Tennis to, under crack, do the basketball court uh, replacements, asphalt. Um, so again, we're kind of just, you know, we have all the pricing, we have the numbers, we have the account numbers, we're setting up the requisitions, the POs, and if all that goes through in the next week or so, um, those will be done before the end of the year with new baskets, new asphalt, new painting, all of that stuff. Um, the LED lighting projects are moving forward. Uh, we did a bunch of different stuff between, you know, monies and uh, UI credits and all of this stuff. Uh, everything's been looked at. Um, the requisitions are in now, so we're going to start to see those two projects at DeLuca and Short Beach start happening soon. Um, and as we get further in and timelines and when they're going to be worked, you know, I could relay it to back to this committee just to kind of keep everybody, you know, abreast of what's going on. Uh, and lastly, you know, Ken's not here, but the safety netting finally is completed at Stratford High School. Uh, so we sat with Eagle Fence. They showed us how to take the netting up and down. It's a very similar system to Longbrook Park, so we know exactly how to use it. Uh, basically, the netting is going to be up every day. There's no real need to take it down unless we are experiencing some crazy, crazy storm where it's gonna to need to, otherwise the field becomes useless with only a four foot or three foot fence around. Um, so uh, that's that's what I got. I mean, the last thing, you know, fall sports are coming in, high school sports are starting, um, you know, football, painting, soccer, um, all of that stuff. Uh, fall baseball is starting to come flag football. Um, all of these new sports, you know, coming in for the fall that the Parks Department does uh, preparations for and painting. So those were all done. 
now we start getting into the seasons and, you know, start having the games and all that stuff come up. Um, I think that's all I really have to report unless anybody has a specific question. Chad, can you hear me? This is Bill. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you have a timeline on the lights, especially at Duluth? Do you think it will get this done this fall? The plan is that, you know, once the rec was in and all that stuff, he was going to order fixtures and they're trying to get it done before the end of the year. Um, so, eh, you know, barring we don't have any major setbacks, it was trying to get it done, in, you know, technically in the off season before next spring. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but the question keeps coming up about tennis courts. I know it's the property that's normally not allowed, but what about Worcester? Is it far enough away that people can use it? Put it in here. His question is um, Are the pickleball courts at Worcester far enough away from the school that people would be allowed to use them during school hours? I guess that's technically up to the principal to call if it's disrupting his school or not. Um, do I think it's far enough? Yes, but if they use it for a gym and stuff, then they're not allowed on the on the courts, you know, on the grounds during school hours, which it's grounds. And Worcester is not allowing that. Yeah, I, you know, again, it would be the principal's call, but it's right on the the you know the grounds of the school. So if you do it one place, then you got to do it everywhere. Just some interesting stuff about pickleball since you brought it up, Bill. Um, I've been up at the Cape a bit, and a lot of articles about all these towns putting in all these pickleball courts and the impact it's having on the local community and the sound, the noise um, that pickleball courts are. Our and and Chad, just curious, have you gotten any, or is the anybody gotten any feedback that it's uh, disrupting the neighborhood? No, not at all. No, they're they're used. They're uh, they're used widely. Um, we get tons of complaints about you know all different things, uh, netting. Can you put up uh, you know um, wind screens? Uh, it just do you have more pickleball courts? When are more dedicated pickleball boards coming compared to, you know, multi-use between tennis and pickleball? So it's just no no noise references, but still, I, you know, when you go from zero to, I think we went to 22, since 22 is still not enough. <laughs> yeah, it's just something to, to think about as you progress to make more of, of, if they're close to houses, the impact they could have negatively on uh, surrounding neighborhoods just a thought it's just a lot's happening up at the cape because they have so many and it's uh they've had to limit use of the courts because the neighborhoods are just so upset yeah but the good thing is is our pickleball courts are kind of widespread and on properties and not in residential areas so they kind of are well placed and uh but definitely something to consider well absolutely i mean aileen would probably get either public works or recreation would get those phone calls so we'll keep an eye out for him. No, no, it was just just some readings I had seen. Yeah, no, very good to know. <clears throat> Chad, this is Tim. Um, yeah, I just drove by the uh, a minute ago. Uh, Trevor High Field. It looks great. I've seen them put that up the last couple of days, and that was really nice improvement. Um, yeah, it looks at, fantastic. At, yeah, at Booth Park, the uh, playground down at the bottom of the hill. Um, I'm just curious if that's kind of on anyone list yet. Um, that has a number of, um, it just looks like it hasn't been neglected in terms of wood chips and, and the actual uh, benches look like they're two feet higher than they should be because there's no wood chips under them. It has exposed uh, concrete bottoms. Yeah, that's, that's Bill, the next playground we're getting to. Bill, did you hear that question? Yeah. Okay. Because he cut in and out. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Chad. Yeah, that's the next playground we're getting to. Sorry. As soon as we get out of the school playgrounds, we're going to start to go into the surrounding playgrounds and start going through them. And that's the, not, that one and Short Beach are two that really over the last couple of years, we've added five bar to them, but they kind of need 
like you said, a very fresh overhaul. Um, the benches in those areas have frost heaved as well as, you know, having <laughs> the, the five bar too low or too high yeah. or whatever they, they've moved yeah. to. So, yeah, that's something that we'll definitely put on our radar and definitely start to clean up. And there's some, uh, there were some replacement parts that I had ordered down from there that were waiting for game time. So maybe when everything comes in, we just kind of throw our resources at it and get it back up to snuff. And the same that's thing with, you know, uh, Short Beach too. You know, Short Beach looks good and all that stuff, but because of the storms and Sandys and Irene's, every time we put wood chips down, there's a lot of sand content in the wood chips, mm. which is not a bad thing. You know, there are playgrounds that are made with sound, but it uh, sand, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's it just changes the critical fall height where five bar is better. So that's something that we're going to have to really take everything out, start fresh, put the six inches in. You know, so yes, those two are definitely on our radar. That makes sense. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And, and from what I see in here with my kids and friends, the Stratford, the the Short Beach uh, seems like it's in much better shape, at least from a kid perspective and parents perspective, than the uh, than the uh, Booth Park. Booth Park. Yeah. Yep. So thank you. Got you. It. No problem. Short Beach uh, playground is very popular. Both are, but I think Short Beach is definitely busier than Booth. Yeah. Do you want to talk at all about the geese, the geese situation? Uh, we just we met with uh, I for, uh, in flight control, or I forget what the guy's company name is. You know, he works with you know highly trained border collies um, to kind of give us a proposal to do 14 visits on site per week. Um, to kind of try and scare the geese away. But, you know, it's it's a very hard property because of the, you know, when he was driving in, he saw the airport and he saw the ponds in the airport, not realizing that it was a busy airport or whatever it was. And his first question is, is like, why aren't the geese in that property? And we told him, you know, well, they shoot off cannons because you have planes landing and all of that stuff. And they shoot off the cannons to scare them off of our property. And then the next best property is short beach and he was like i get it you know so um you know geese geese are not you know we're, we're looking forward to see i'm looking forward to see his proposal on how you know this is going to work if he varies during different times of the day um you know he came up with a whole slew of things of how it you know disrupts their patterns by having predators in there um you know so we're just waiting to see what he uh comes back with and the other thing is there is a chemical or a, a it's a liquid something. Um, it's called flight control. I, that's why I don't think the guy's company's name is that, but it's flight control. And it's stuff that you spray in and around the ponds, but it's something that needs diligent spray. It's not harmful. It's not a pesticide. It's not registered by the EPA. It's just something that deters the geese. From what I've heard, it's actually like an infrared or a, a blue light, ultrasight blue, that helps deter their flight patterns. Um, again, you know, it may work some areas, but if it, if you don't spray it diligently, if you get rain or if you run irrigation, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna weaken the substance on the ground. When you mow, it's gonna take it up. So it really, it really requires a lot of applications. So we're looking into that respect too, to see, you know, what the cost would be, what the labor would be, um, what the effectiveness would be, and all of that stuff. Chad, do you think the company might be Geese Chasers, Southern Connecticut? Uh, something like that. I know Bobby and Pete took his business card. I didn't take his business card because he was just going to email all the information to the three of us, uh, and I haven't seen a proposal yet. Okay. I, I went to the last short beach commission and they said that Andrea from the health department has now said it's a health issue. I mean, not just at short beach, but the soccer fields too. Ball fields. So it's yeah, a big I mean, problem. Somebody told us Canadian geese are banned from uh, fields and parks in Canada. <laughs> I'd love to hear an explanation on that. Banned? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> And Chad, I want to just do a shout out to the public, uh, the Parks Department. If anybody's familiar with the public access across from Pex Pond, they did a great job cleaning it up there. And you can now actually launch a kayak from there again. And 
you get a great view of the river. It's a small little area, but it's a really, really nice area. Thank you. Yeah, it really came out fantastic. Yeah. Okay, anybody have anything else for Chad? If not, uh, uh, Haley, are you giving us a report for Amy? I am. So, rec department, adult and youth programs, um, adult co-ed and men's softball are in the playoffs, and adult beach volleyball has ended. Fall leagues are going to begin the end of September. Uh, registration for swim lessons is Tuesday, September 6th at 8 a.m. All the lessons, aqua aerobics classes, and open swims will be held at El Grasso since the swim teams are going to be using flood. Worcester and Short Beach are now open and available to reserve for pickleball and tennis court reservations. Residents only can still reserve Worcester, Flood, Short Beach, and Longbrook tennis courts for two hours each day. Uh, fields are being permitted for all the fall sports. Last day for beach stickers, checkers, and lifeguards at Long Beach and Short Beach is Labor Day, Monday, September 5th. Upcoming events, September 10th, Down and Dirty at Short Beach, September 17th, Bonfire at the Beach at Short Beach, September 17th, Perry House Pirate Scavenger Hunt at Shakespeare, September 18th, Corsair Car Show at Short Beach, September 24th is the Burning Festival and Shakespeare Market, September 4th and 18th. And that's all I have. And let me add the uh, Latin American festivals at Sheridan Green on September 18th. And the 19th annual Sheridan Golf Tournament on September 24th. We'll be competing with what the, uh, the bird, bird event. Yeah. Thanks to Assistant Recreation uh, Superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any questions? If not, uh, continuing items. Wait a minute, I couldn't press mute quick enough. Chad, just curious, when does the uh, splash pad close? We usually go by the weather, and if it's nice for the next week or two, we'll keep it open for the weekends. Um, it's still been busy used, um, so uh, I would say probably by the, the 15th or so of September is when we shut it down. Okay, but after Monday, it's just open on the weekends, not during the week? No, it'll be open during the week, and then as the as it kind of cools off, or if it gets colder, um, then it could just be open on weekends, or ultimately just closing. But for now, it's still being used, and it's still open. Thank you. Okay, uh, what baseball field? Anything new there, Chad? Nothing yet, but that's on my radar to get uh, my guys working on that this fall. Uh, once we kind of get out of, you know, like uh, this heavy growing season and stuff like that, just disassemble the backstop. So then we'll start with that. Although the, uh, I think the old timers said they would be interested in taking that down. I haven't even noticed if they did or not. Um, it's still there, but if they want to, I have no problem with that. That's fine. We're just going to recycle it anyway. Yeah, I'll remind them. The pickleball courts, we already talked about that. Longbrook tennis courts, I haven't heard an update on what, what the status is. Have you heard anything? No, sir, nothing. No. Well, town sledding, I guess, uh, maybe for October, Tim Sepatelli can give us a report. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get snow this year. What was that? He said, this uh, this winter, we're going to get snow. Yeah. No, I said, I don't know if we're going to get snow. We'll see. We usually get a lot of snow. And a gated Booth Park. Uh, I don't know. Booth Park, I'm hearing more and more stories of vandalism, but yeah. I'm going to ask the chief if they can just increase the patrols up there. And then I... Uh, new business, two things I want to mention. I talked to Bob Baird the other day, and 
the Breakettes have received a nice donation. He can't give us any details yet, and they're going to come to the town for the idea of putting a Hall of Fame slash museum at Deluca Field. Breakettes Hall of Fame. So we'll be hearing more about that. He, he said he can't give you details, but he said it was a nice donation that they'll be hoping to do something. And then down the road, it's probably going to be a while, but the property on East Broadway, as you come off Ferry Boulevard, and I can't think of what it's called, the mayor is proposing that be used for uh, fields in the future after the EPA does their work on it. It's the Morgan Francis property. That's it. <laughs> Where's that at again? Yeah, if you come off Trey Boulevard on the East Broadway, there's a little shit like, uh, not a shed, it's a rather large, ugly look at the little building. Can you picture it as you, if you come off Ferry Boulevard across from. Uh, Where Ferry Boulevard is, there's like the, the old gas station, Snacks Plus used to be there. And if, the, if you then turn like bare right so like if you were going on to east broadway kind of uh, it looks like then the dry cleaners will be on your left hand side and there's a yellow building it looks like a yellow stucco building that I'm... and property behind it that backs up all the way onto blakeman place that's referred to as the morgan francis property that's what Bill's talking about. So the EPA is going to do a cleanup of that. And that it's, I forget how many acres she said, but it's uh, enough to put in some. Sounds like a couple of fields, maybe a playground, but that's down the road. We'll be talking more about it. And if anybody, anybody have anything else? I'm glad we pulled this off. Uh, meeting will be Thursday, October 6th at 6 p.m. And we'll decide as we get closer whether to meet in person or I know they leave both for uh, virtual, but after tonight, I might want to go for in person. You know what, Bill? Let's do, you know, I could, I could just you and I, and I think Rick Marcone had problems too. I can create a meeting, like an arbitrary, like I'll call it a test. And I'll okay. send it to you too, and then we can practice to see if you guys have any problems logging in. Okay, I never had a problem logging in to go to media. I've always liked it. Yeah, I don't know what's up unless the only thing I can even suggest, and I don't know, is two people I know had to. Um, Update GoToMeeting to GoTo.com. They didn't have the latest version, but we can. Pro I'll create a meeting, and me, you, and Rick can practice. It's odd. I couldn't even call in on the phone. I got the same message about the invalid code. And did you use the link that I emailed you? Well, I just uh, went to GoToMeeting and then typed in the uh, code. Oh. So the other thing next time, if you open that email. Where it's you know where I sent I sent it again and it says you know your yeah. HTTPS blah 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 blah. If you just click on that link, that'll bring you right into the meeting. Yeah, I'll have to try that. Okay, we'll practice. All right, so I guess with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? Drew will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second it. Prez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. And the meeting is adjourned at 6.35 p.m. Thanks, Amy. Oh, thanks, Thank Bill. You. Sorry.